But what's going on guys? Zio here with week 2 of the playoffs in the NES. Uh, this week, if you missed the team builder, we're going up against the Aston Charizards, coached by the Mad Danny. Uh, he completely destroyed us in the last week of the regular season with an 0-4 win. Um, that was honestly closer to like an 0-6 win for him. <laughs> Um, I didn't really play particularly well and ended up not really like recording anything anyway just because real life got in the way and then I got distracted with other stuff. Um, so if, since you guys missed that battle I should say, um, this was fairly similar to the team that he brought against me um, last time. Instead of Metagross I believe he had a Zoomeroll that ended up doing a decent amount to my team and I thought might come again. Um, but I can't say I was really surprised to see Metagross in its place. Um, Mega Sableye is going to be very annoying to take down. Uh, Rotom Heat's also going to be pretty annoying to take down, especially since I don't actually have rocks this week. Um, Gyarados I expect to be the defensive Thunder Wave substitute set that he brought last time against me, and that he seems to like quite a lot. Um, right on, I expect to be his stealth rocker this week, just because I see it as a more likely stealth rocker over Metagross. Um, Hydreigon could be either Choice Specs, Choice Scarf, or um, Choice Band, I guess. I expect it to be either Scarf or Specs. Um, and Metagross can most likely be the agility. I'm just gonna pause really quick. Uh, Metagross is most likely going to be the agility setup sweeper that he likes quite a lot. Um, so going into this week, my main plan was to keep rocks off the field for as long as I could, uh, just because I know that they do quite a lot to my team. Um, the only prevention that I have this week is Magic Bounce Absol, which doesn't really work super well against Rhydon because Rhydon gets Megahorn. Um, so I have to be pretty careful about that and mostly just try to play um, very aggressively with Thunderous T and Vaporeon to be able to stop it. Um, so I expect him to lead Mega Sableye here and just get his Mega off because he likes to do that. Um, so I lead to my counter with it. Waiting for myself to click the video? Okay. I lead to my counter for that. Um, I also thought at the last minute that he might have just straight up led right on to try to get the rocks off because he knew that he had Megahorn. Um, I wasn't about to lead Mega Absol and just protect just because that seems like it wouldn't have been very good for momentum um, and I was pretty heavily fearing an agility Metagross and when he led with it I kind of expected it to be that. Um, so <laughs> Right here, I don't really want Karen to stay in, even though a Scald would be kind of nice, I guess. Um, I thought about it for a while. I thought about all these turns for a while, actually, just because I really needed to consider all of my options this week. Um, I didn't really expect him to double straight into Gyarados there, so I went ahead and went into Leela just because I expected him to stay in an attack, or I expected him to stay in an agility. Um, it wouldn't have really surprised me if he was like an agility lumberry set or something, so I was kind of fearing that at the, this point in the battle. Um, I figured I could go into Leela and either trick it the lagging tail, which is its item this week, um, to make it not go fast at all, or I could try to get a Will-O-Wisp off, which I was probably the more likely play, I guess. Uh, him doubling straight into Gyarados on my Vaporeon was not something that I expected though, uh, just because if I would have gotten a Scald Burn it would have severely hampered like pretty much any form of Gyarados. Uh, but he got me on the double and there's not really much I can do but switch out into Thunderous as he gets a substitute off. Um, and with Leftovers this basically confirms that he's the defensive set that he brought against me last time. Um, kind of annoying because that, pro <laughs> that set definitely ended up being an issue for me. Um, but I can't really say I'm too surprised. Uh, so here I figure he's probably going to try to waterfall me. Um, I don't necessarily want to... Um, I don't want to go straight for a Thunderbolt here even though I could bluff a Scarf I guess. Uh, just because if he does have a ton of um, attack investment and stuff it could do quite a lot of damage to me. Um, or, I guess I can interrupt here and say sorry if this commentary is not up to my normal standards. Um, I'm not really feeling super great this week, so I'm trying to just get through this, I guess. Um, 
but I didn't want to go straight for a Thunderbolt even though it obviously would have broken a sub. I expected a waterfall, but I just decided to go for a substitute of my own here. Um, just on the off chance that he decided to switch straight out into right on or something to be able to take a Thunderbolt. Um, he instead just goes for the waterfall and breaks my sub. Um, so I'm basically in the position I was at before but with less HP so I just decided to break his sub so I can put him in that 50-50 again. Um, and this turn is actually huge to be honest even though it's only turn 4 so I really want to pause it already and kind of talk about this a little bit more. Um, Thunderbolt will absolutely 1 million percent destroy any form of a Gyarados. Like, there's really no way that Gyarados is ever going to be able to live a Thunderbolt from a Thunderous Therian. Um, I know that, he knows that, everyone in the world knows that, to be honest. Um, but at this point, I'm having a hard time figuring out what he wants to switch into, just because it's so early into the battle. Um, the really obvious switch here is Rhydon, obviously, because Rhydon doesn't take any damage from it. Uh, but if he has a specially defensive Rotom Heat, it could also take it pretty well. Um, if it ends up being some kind of like Assault Vest Metagross, it might even be able to take it pretty well. Um, but my point is is that I, I'm stuck in a 50-50 here between going for Thunderbolt. Well, I guess it's like three things I can do, because I can go for a Thunderbolt and guaranteed kill this Gyarados, but probably get caught on the right on switch. Uh, I can go for a substitute, which is kind of like a middle ground play, I guess, because if he goes for a substitute of his own, then I just go for a Thunderbolt and we're pretty much right back into the scenario. Uh, if I go for a Nasty Plot here, which would be a very aggressive play, but something I could do. Um, if he waterfalls me, I die, obviously, but if he switches into Rhydon, I'm able to two-hit KO it with um, HP Ice, even if it's like very, very um, specially defensive. Um, and I'm able to two-hit KO everything else that resists HP Ice with Thunderbolt, so... Um, so that could have been a play too, I guess. Um, but I was mainly thinking about going for a Thunderbolt or switching into Vaporeon and pressuring right on out. Um, and this turn probably took, like, I want to say a minute and a half of solid thinking of what I wanted to do here. Um, I ultimately decided to just go for the Thunderbolt because I took so long making the play that I thought he might have overthought it, to be honest. Um, and since I was playing such a good player, I kind of had to think that way. Um, unfortunately, he makes the save play, goes straight into right on, and it's at this point that I realized I played very aggressively for no reason and ended up letting rocks basically go up for free on turn 5 of the battle when my main thing was trying to keep rocks off the field as long as possible. Um, if I would have went for an HP Ice here straight up, um, it probably would have only done about like 30 to 40 percent, I think. Um, so I would have been in a pretty similar situation. So the correct play here 100 percent was to just double into Vaporeon. Um, but it was a hard play to see with the nerves that I had <laughs> into this battle, being perfectly honest. Um, this is the first time I've had like a playoff game like this, so I ended up kind of not really doing as well as I should have, I guess. Um, so like I said, he gets rocks up for free. Um, and I could try to be aggressive here and catch something on a double, uh, but honestly nothing on his team really wants to take a Scald. Um, so even though it's a very predictable play, I just decide- oh, just kidding. <laughs> this battle's a little bit longer, so even though it's a predictable play to go for the Scald, I didn't want to go for it there. Um, I instead just wanted to be able to um, go for a pretty safe wish because I knew he wasn't going to want to stay in. Um, spoilers, the Scald play is a little bit later. Um, but I went for the wish because I knew he wasn't going to stay in and with the ability to wish pass, I could pretty much pass into anything here. Um, even if he went for the worst case scenario here, which is Sableye, I guess. Um, I can double into Victini here, because I have a Culpaberry, I know I'm going to be able to live a knockoff or a foul play or something if he goes for it. He instead goes for a Will-O-Wisp, which is even better. Um, not like it really would have mattered, I guess, but I still save my item. Um, and here I just end up going for a Dazzling Gleam, just because I want to gauge how especially defensive this thing actually is. Um, and I know, like I said, I could live anything. Um, it's very, very annoying that that's not a two-hit KO, um, but I expected him to be able to EV that to not die. Um, I could actually stay in at this point and just go for the three-hit KO with Dazzling Glaive, and he knows that. 
Um, so I'm going to try to take advantage of this momentum and double into Gramble just because I figure he's not going to Will-O-Wisp when Victini is on the field and can, pot and can potentially kill it. Um, so he's probably going to go for either a knockoff, which would kind of suck but not really be the end of the world. Uh, but also wouldn't really be very likely since Victini doesn't have an item, so it wouldn't do very much damage. Um, or likely go for the foul play, which Gramble resists. Um, instead, he makes a good double again um, and just goes into Rotom Heat. Um, Rotom Heat would have been able to take the Dazzling Gleam, it would have been able to take a V Create. Um, so it was a very good middle ground play, on, or defensive play, I guess, on his part. Um, I could stay in here and go for a rock slide and do significant damage to this thing, um, but I don't actually, first of all, want to reveal it yet, and I also don't want to potentially get burned by a Will-O-Wisp on this thing. Um, and since I haven't seen what this set is at all, um, I have to be pretty careful of it so far. Um, I was very much hoping that he was just going to go for a Volt Switch or a Thunder Wave, but he instead just makes a safe play and just kills off Thunderous. Um, there wasn't really a whole lot I could have done with Thunderous at this point in the battle anyway, um, which kind of sucks. Um, I wore myself down to the point where I could have been revenged after anything with Metagross Bullet Punch. Um, I also could have been pretty much just taken out by anything left on his team. Um, so I played Risky there hoping that he just went for a Volt Switch to try to get more momentum or trying to go for a Thunder Wave to paralyze something um because obviously i wasn't really gonna stay in there um so he made a good play <laughs> long story short and killed off thunderous um which is kind of annoying because thunderous was supposed to be like a good early game like destroyer or at least like weaken down his team to be able to clean up late and it ended up doing pretty much nothing <laughs> Um, so I instead just decided to go into Absol and Bluff that I have a Stone Edge here and just be able to get my Mega Evolution off. Uh, also 0.5 Special Attack, um, it's not doing anything to me. Um, so I just go for a knockoff, um, knock off those things leftovers, so thankfully it's not going to do quite as much to me. Um, so here I'm actually pretty excited because I expect him to stay in and either go for a substitute or just go for a waterfall straight up. Um, if you miss my team builder, I actually have Thunderbolt specifically for a defensive Gyarados to be able to Oko it from this range. Um, but unfortunately, he actually reads my Thunderbolt and goes into Ride On, which really sucks. Because um, I also have to switch out here because I'm like 90% sure this thing has Mega Horn. Because Mega Horn just does a lot of damage to Mega Absol. Um, so, very good play on Danny to scout for Thunderbolt. Um, I did feel like I didn't really have a choice at that point other than to be very aggressive and show the Thunderbolt there. Um, I wasn't going to go for a double knockoff, and I guess he knew that just because I went for a knockoff the first time. Um, I wasn't going to go for a Sucker Punch because he could have just set up a free sub in my face and I would have been screwed. Um, and I guess at that point, um, if I was going to go for a Rock Slide or something, um, right on would have resisted it very well. Um, so I guess in hindsight, there's more reasons than just scouting Thunderbolt to be able to go into Ride On. Uh, but still, it was a good play on his part. Um, I'm going to scout for Mega Horn here because I figure he's going to go for it. And Karen's pretty physically defensive and obviously just kind of eats it up. Um, so here's the play <laughs> I mentioned a couple of turns ago where I just went for a Skull because nothing on his team really wanted to take it. Um, I get lucky and get the burn here. I don't really expect it to matter too much because, I mean, the only thing that it's probably going to weaken, potentially, is U-Turn, if this thing's scarfed. Um, I expect it to be special, like with Draco, Dark Pulse, stuff like that, um, but it could be a special scarf with U-Turn also. Um, so I figure it doesn't want to stay in on my Ice Beam here. Um, so I just decided to go for it, even though it's pretty predictable. It still does solid damage to Sableye, so I'm not really too upset about it. Um, and actually would have still killed from there. So instead, <laughs> er, I'm sorry, uh, Scald would have killed from there, but Ice Beam wouldn't, so I had to go for a Scald, even though it was kind of a little bit more predictable. Um, I was really hoping to get the burn on this thing, to be honest, because the burn on this would have helped so much more than the burn on Hydreigon, um, just because it would have force this thing to not really sit behind a sub all the time. Um, 
The last time I played Danny, I brought Gramble and it did quite a lot of damage, but it did not have Thunder Punch because I didn't think that a defensive Gyarados was going to do as much damage as it did. Um, it didn't. It, blah, blah, blah. I did not make that mistake again. Um, I know how annoying defensive Gramble or defensive Gyarados can be. Um, so I figured with Life Orb, even at minus one attack, if I get intimidated, I'm still able to do a solid amount of damage. Um, I could have predicted and went for a rock slide there, but I instead just decided to double. Um, probably not the best double I could have made since I could have potentially killed with a rock slide too, I think. I think it was a roll that I was not in favor of, which is the main reason why I didn't want to go for it. Um, I didn't want to go for a thunder punch again just because I kind of figured that he was going to switch either into ride on or Rotom Heat. Um, I expected right on, so I tried to do the double into Vaporeon to try to catch him, but he made the good middle ground play and just went to Rotom Heat instead, so I had to switch. Um, so I double under Leela here, hoping that he just goes for an overheat. I'm able to live and trick this thing, because it's getting to be very annoying. Um, instead he makes a good play and goes for the Volt Switch now that Thunderous T is gone, nice and early. Um, there's absolutely nothing I can do to save Lai, unfortunately. I can go for Nightshades, but it's not really going to do anything. Um, I can try to trick it, but it's literally not going to do anything. Um, so instead I just go for a Memento to be able to prevent this thing from going for hurtful full play or foul plays, I guess. Um, since I'm Parrot, I know that he obviously can't Willow Wisp me and burn me, so I just decide to go into Gramble, because I can take whatever hit he's going for and just fire off damage. Um, but instead, because I obviously could have done damage there, um, <sighs> this commentary is <laughs> not great, sorry. Um, I realized that I could have done damage there with Gramble and went for a play rough or something like that, but... Um, I didn't really want to miss, <laughs> to be perfectly honest, and I thought he was going to go into Metagross here, uh, just because Metagross seems like a pretty good um, direct counter to Gramble. So I tried to read his Metagross switch in and go into Victini. Um, it didn't actually really end up mattering too much, because I do have Bolt Strike on this Victini, and I'm finally, finally able to take down this fucking Gyarados. So at least at some point in this game, I did not get overplayed on a switch. Um, so it kind of sucks that I took 25% stealth rock damage, but I'm still at a range where I can live a Dark Pulse from a Choice Scarf Hydreigon, um, which at this point I expected to be because I expected to want to outspeed Victini. Um, I can live anything from um, Sableye too. Uh, so he goes into Hydreigon here, and at this point I actually kind of have to start making some plays to get back in the game. Um, I have obviously been on my back foot for the first like 24 turns of this game, um, so I need to try to be a little bit aggressive here. Um, like I said, I calced it and realized that I was going to live a Dark Pulse, um, so rather than go for a fairly obvious Dazzling Gleam, which is obviously four times super effective, um, I instead expected him to U-turn on me, even though it wasn't going to do very much damage and go either into Rhydon or Rotom Heat here, and I went for an HP Water, even though it was resisted by Hydreigon. <clears throat> uh, luckily, he actually does go for the U-Turn, and he does go into Rotom Heat predicting the Dazzling Gleam, so I'm able to get what looks like a 2-hit KO on it. Um, I figure this thing's not Scarfed based on the damage it was doing to... Um, based on the damage it did to Leela with the Volt Switch. Um, the only way it could have done 37% is if it was Specs. Um, so I realized that this thing wasn't Scarf, so it wasn't going to be able to outspeed me. So obviously I would be able to kill it with an HP Water here. Um, I could have read the Hydreigon Switch and went for a Dazzling Gleam, but honestly I just really, really, really wanted to kill Rotom Heat. Uh, I kind of wish that I would have read that Switch a little bit better to be honest, but um, I don't know. <laughs> I I was just trying to focus on killing the thing in front of me at that point. Um, Dark Pulse was still actually a roll to kill at that point, so I decided to stay in and just hope that he either U-turned again or um, just went for something else, I guess. <laughs> um, I didn't expect him to go for Draco just because I did have um, Grample still alive in the back. Um, but I was hoping the Dark Pulse wouldn't have killed, so I could have killed this Hydreigon. 
Um, it's not really the end of the world because I can still kill it from this range with a knockoff. Um, I instead decided to go for... Oh, sorry. I could kill it from that range with an Ice Beam, but not a knockoff, so I have to go for Ice Beam even though I wanted to go for knockoff is what happened. Um, so, unfortunately, um, Rhydon is still at too high of a range to be able to actually live. Um, so, I can't really go for a knockoff yet because I figure that anything this thing does is going to kill me at this point. Um, Megahorn would potentially not have killed or Megahorn could have missed or whatever, but I think he can just go for Earthquake at this point and kill me. Um, so I instead just decided to keep it safe. Um, he gets a crit, which is very annoying because I would have actually been able to live two Earthquakes. Um, I'm not going to say this crit like changed the game or anything because I was pretty heavily on my back foot at this point. Um, but at the same time, it's not helpful when I get crit when I need to not get crit. Um, so I have to sack Vaporeon here, um, or at least, like, keep it in, even though I don't particularly want to, I guess. Um, so, luckily I get the kill, and... <sighs> also, as a heads up, I'm not very happy with this commentary, but I'm also not feeling well, so I don't think I'm gonna be able to re-record it. Um, sorry in advance, where is right on? There he is. Alright, so I know Vaporeon's gonna die here. Um, I would have liked to keep it alive a little bit longer because I could have potentially switched into an overheat or something. Um, but at that point I just have to sack it and try to get momentum this way. Um, I go into Gramble even though it's not gonna be able to outspeed at this point. Um, and at this point I have to make a prediction here. Um, play rough kills, and I know that play rough kills, and I know that he knows that play rough kills. So it's another one of those situations where do I go for the play rough that I know that it kills or do I go for a move predicting something else to come in? And I have coverage to hit everything on his team with play rough, rock slide, uh, fire punch, and uh, whatever the fourth move is, but between those three I can, or rock slide, sorry. Between those four moves I can hit everything on his team, so I have to kind of predict here. Um, I actually end up deciding to not go for the play rough, even though it's the more obvious play, because I predicted him to double into Rotom Heat for basically free at this point. Um, so I go for the rock slide here, and unfortunately does next to nothing to save a lot here. Uh, I've actually read the recover there and wanted to land a play rough to be able to kill myself and revenge kill with uh, Mega Absol. Um, but was for unfortunately not able to do that because I missed. Um, as you can see, there was a lot of like unfortunate luck that added on to my not great playing to be able to kind of just seal this game out. Um, but whatever, <laughs> it's not the end of the world. Um, I go into Mega Absol here because the only thing I can do at this point is just freeze everything pretty much. Um, I'm not really expecting to win at this point, but at the same time there's only so much I can do um, and just like the end of the regular season uh, my season ends with an 0-4 loss to Danny um, excellently excellently played game on his part um, and honestly I feel like I actually played better this game than I did in week 15 of the regular season um, I still don't think that I made all of the aggressive plays that I needed to make with this team to be able to win um, Dusclops was kind of useless this game even though it put in quite a lot of work in the practice game so I'm willing to just say that I didn't play it as well as I should have. Um, my main mistake this game was that early turn where I went for Thunderbolt with Thunder Asterion instead of just doubling into Vaporeon to keep rocks up. Um, if I would have kept rocks off my field then it would have been so much easier for me to pivot around and do all the stuff that I needed to do this game. Um, I still feel like I had the team to win this matchup. Um, I didn't play it well enough, but I'm okay with how I played. And I guess since my season is officially over, I can say that I'm pretty happy overall with how I played this season. Um, there were some times where I went a little overboard with trying to potentially be a little bit too gimmicky. Um, I don't believe that this happened this week, even though I brought a lagging tail Dusclops. <laughs> Uh, because I believe that it, as I got towards the end of the season, I kind of started to see what actually worked each week versus what just could be a cool gimmick for me to bring sometimes. 
Like I kind of started to see what gimmicks would actually work in a given week rather than just being like, hmm, this thing gets a cool move, let's bring it this week or whatever. Um, so I, I don't know. I guess I'm just trying to be a little bit retrospective since this is the last game of the season. Um, Super Nerd 92 and I, uh, Super Nerd 92 is my assistant coach slash the coach of the Seattle Wingles, by the way. Uh, he's the guy I normally practice against every week. Um, but since we were both in the semifinals and both lost this week, um, we decided to end up having a third place match. Um, it doesn't actually count for anything in the rankings or whatever. It's just kind of a friendly match just to use our teams one more time against each other, I guess. Um, and since we've played each other like multiple hours a week for the past like 15, 16 weeks or something like that, um, we thought it'd be fun to get one last battle in with our teams before um, the season was officially over and stuff. Um, so expect that battle up within the next couple of days, I guess. Um, sorry this one ended up taking so long to go up, um, but <laughs> obviously I wasn't feeling well. Um, I had also forgot to mention that my computer had some weird recording issues and stuff after it decided to update on me because Windows 10 is the best. Um, but that's okay. I got it up finally. Sorry it took so long, Danny. Uh, but excellent game. Uh, stay tuned if you're watching this. Um, I'm trying to get this uploaded on Saturday, October 1st, um, since I actually have a little bit of time to record and render and stuff right now. Um, but if you're watching this around then, stay tuned to the subreddit for the finals game, which should be very exciting between Tone114 and the SM Charizards. Um, stay tuned to this channel for a little bit more NES action. Um, we are planning on having an off-season monotype tournament, um, so stay tuned for updates for that, and I guess just in general, stay tuned. Um, I'll see you guys soon, and... Although I am upset that I couldn't make it to the finals for you guys, I am pretty happy with how the season went. So thank you guys for sticking around and watching because it really does mean a lot. Um, see you in the next video, I guess. Bye.